you've been awarded a job which requires the establishment of a control network to a specified accuracy. You have a couple options available to you. Option one, go out and take observations in a manner that you think would be sufficient to hit that spec. Take check shots where you can and hope for the best. Or option two, use Starnet's pre-analysis program to plan your control network and give yourself a very good idea that you will hit spec the first time. In today's video, we are going to discuss how using Starnet's pre-analysis program can save you a significant amount of time and money by planning out your control networks. Even if you don't have an interest in Starnet, you may want to stick around because we also go into how the different sources of error affect the derived coordinates of the control points we set. It's not uncommon to get a specified accuracy requirement for the establishment of a control network, especially when dealing with an educated client and almost always when planning a monitoring scheme. If you've been hired to monitor movement as small as 15 thousandths of a foot or 5 millimeters, for example, you want to be sure your relative accuracy is significantly better than that. Of course, there are situations when you're dealing with a client that may not be well versed in surveying or realistically obtainable accuracy, who may give you an accuracy spec somewhere along the lines of as good as possible or a few thou or mil. When you get the as good as possible answer, or I don't know, this can be tricky on how to proceed. How the control will be used will dictate the accuracy required, and it will more or less be up to the surveyor to determine the accuracy required in that situation. For example, if I get that answer and I know I'm setting control for aerial targets for photogrammetry, I will take a much different approach versus if the control is going to be the main site control for a high-rise building going up in a downtown area in a zero setback situation and I know embeds and anchor bolts will be set from this control network. If I get the answer perfect or within a few thou or millimeter and I have a pretty good idea that this level of accuracy not only far exceeds what is realistically needed for the application but given the circumstances at hand, it's not realistic that we're able to get that level of accuracy, then I will usually give them two quotes, one based on what they've requested and one that I feel meets a more realistic accuracy specification and try to spend a bit of time educating them on realistic accuracy specifications. Pre-analysis or even survey buddy can be very useful for this. Let's start off by talking about the pros and cons of each method. The pro of winging it is fairly obvious. You don't need to run a pre-analysis. This means you don't need Starnet if you don't already have it, and you can save yourself 20 minutes or so of office time on the front end. Now let's dig into option two where we use pre-analysis. First of all, if you don't already have Starnet or another least squares adjustment program and you're handling survey data, I would highly recommend you consider changing that. Check out my other video improving your survey control, least squares adjustment with Starnet, if you're not sure if you need it or not. So not having Starnet shouldn't really be an excuse for not running a pre-analysis. If you feel the 20 or so minutes it takes to run a pre-analysis isn't worth it, it very well might not be if we're talking about a simple house topo or excavation staking, but once we start looking at jobs with a bit of complexity, or we are wanting to get some decent accuracy out of our networks, it may be time to make a quick pre-analysis. Once you've done it a few times, it doesn't take much time at all. Pre-analysis will give you a very reliable idea of your control network accuracy at varying degrees of confidence before you ever go out into the field. It will help you plan your equipment choice, how many observations you need to take, and if additional geometry is needed to meet the given accuracy spec. Pre-analysis is an error propagation program inside of Starnet that allows the user to process the network using a list of approximate coordinates for all the stations supplied by you and a list of observation codes to indicate which distances, angles, and other field data will be observed. No actual field observation data is required. Starnet will analyze the geometric strength of the network using your approximate layout and the instrument accuracy supplied as observation standard errors. The predicted accuracy of each control point will be computed and error ellipses will be generated. 
if after we pick the location of our desired control points, observations, and specs of the equipment we want to use, and we see we will not meet the desired accuracy specification, we need to go back and start making adjustments, whether that be adding more points to strengthen the geometry, taking additional rounds of observations, or choosing a better piece of equipment. There have been more times than I can count when a field crew has come back with their data, I process it in Starnet, and while it is good data, their observation error meets predicted error, but the geometry is either too weak or they didn't make enough observations to meet spec. This isn't the end of the world if our job is nearby and we can go back another day, but there have been fly in fly out jobs where the raw data didn't get back to me in time and now we're stuck in a situation of having to explain to the client why we didn't meet the requirements or having to take a big hit flying the crew back out, all of which could have been avoided running pre-analysis. The first step is to start a new Starnet project. Next, we need to set the instrument specs of the equipment we want to use and make sure we have the right coordinate system set up. We will need approximate coordinates of the control points to get us started. You have two options here. You can either use Google Earth or a CAD program. If you're using Google Earth, simply set place marks at your desired control locations and put all those place marks in a folder. I cannot seem to figure out how to automatically pull elevations from Google Earth using this method, but you can enter them in manually in the altitude panel. Just be sure to set the drop down to absolute. If anyone knows how to pull these elevations automatically, let me know in the comment section. Save the folder as a KML and then open it in Notepad or a similar program. Copy and paste that code into the KML to Starnet converter. The link for that will be in the description. The benefit of using this method is you can quickly jump into Street View and verify if the locations you're setting make sense. The other option, using CAD, isn't really any easier, but if you already have a CAD drawing set up, then it may be quicker. Simply set your coordinate system, turn on your background imagery, and pick your points. If you have surface data in your drawing, a DEM from USGS for example, you can extract elevations from there or manually enter them in, in CAD or later in Starnet. When you're done, you can export a CSV and bring that into Starnet as C records. Once we have our approximate coordinates in Starnet, we need to start adding potential observations. Where you plan to set up and the observations you'll make in the field. This will be an iterative process where you will find a balance between accuracy and efficiency. It's not efficient to run an excessive number of rounds and observations after you already hit spec. And on the flip side, it doesn't make sense to have the bare minimum geometry and number of observations and call it a day before you're even close to spec. Pre-analysis saves you time by allowing you to ideally plan the most efficient control network possible while meeting the needs of your client. Now that we know the basics, let's see it in action. This will be a fictionary example of a site in Orlando. The client is looking to build three concrete buildings, one of which will be a manufacturing facility that will require layout of embeds and anchor bolts to a relative accuracy of 15 thousandths of a foot or five millimeters. The building corner layout won't require that level of relative accuracy to property lines, so we'll stick to the more stringent spec. I'll start off by creating a Starnet project and ensuring my project settings are correct and using Google Earth to set the main site control points that will hopefully last the duration of the project. I'm using the hotkey Control shift p to set place marks. I'll quickly jump in and out of Street View just to double check I'm setting these points in a location where it makes sense on the ground. Keep in mind these points don't need to be exactly in the right place. This is just to approximate the geometry of the control network. Once I have my points, I'll save the KML and drop that code into the converter. Just a quick tip, make sure you save it as a KML and not a KMZ. Now that I have my main control points in Starnet, I'll fix one point and hold the bearing to another. Once I go to create my actual project, how I start out will depend if I'm planning on taking GNSS observations to establish a held baseline or if I'll hold observations to some of the property corners. Because we didn't enter elevations in Google Earth to use, we can do that now. 
I'm going to pick an elevation on one site and hold it for all points. To be able to get a bearing that will keep the project relatively in the right place, I'll enter in my first set of observations letting the bearing float, run the program, and grab the actual bearing from the network plot and hold that. Technically speaking, we have enough data right now for a control network, albeit a fairly poor one. We'll take a look at our control points area ellipses. These are basically saying that we are 95% sure the true value of the control point is somewhere inside that ellipse. The access perpendicular to line of sight is mostly influenced by pointing and reading error at this point, and the access in line with the observations is mostly influenced by the error in the EDM measurement. To quickly test this, I'll alter the instrument settings so we can graphically see how they are influencing the error ellipses. Altering the horizontal and vertical centering errors will have the same effect, hence how important it is to use realistic values. Just a quick reminder, all the observations we are entering in are assuming both faces were used as the ISO spec we entered into the instrument settings is based on that. Now we will start to fill in observations in the same manner that I would take them if I was out in the field. Does this mean I'm going to observe every single point I have line of sight to from every setup? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. If I know I will be on site by myself and I only have four poles and prisms with me to set up at a time and it's a huge site, the most efficient approach may not be running around jumping poles to every hub that's half a mile walk there and half a mile walk back. If I'm on a smaller site with a lot of obstructions where I can only see three to four points each time, I'll probably make use of everything I have available to me. For this example, let's say I have a rodman with me that can drive to each hub, but I only have four rods at my disposal. There's a few ways I could tackle this. I could stay set up at each main corner hub and take my rounds to four points, then get them to jump in the truck and bump the three rods to the remaining three points, leaving the back site where it is. Or I could set up, take my rounds to four points, and then move the instrument rinse and repeat. If I chose the latter method, I could probably set up on all eight points in the same amount of time it would take me to set up on the main four points and wait for the rodman to move poles around. Let's try it both ways and see what provides mathematically better accuracy. So it looks like we'll get better results setting up on the main four hubs and bumping the rods around. An easy day for me, but the raw man has his work cut out for him. Now we can see we've hit our spec on the exterior control points. We were lucky we didn't have to deal with any obstructions that limited our sight lines. Obviously this isn't always the case, and you'll often have to add interior points or common points offline to help with the geometry of your network. Even if you don't necessarily plan on keeping these hubs for too long, as they may land in areas that will get disturbed fairly quickly, they can still help tremendously with creating the triangles that strengthen a least squares adjustment. So far, we've got away with only running a single round of observations to meet spec. But since the time investment is relatively low to add on rounds, let's do a bit of testing and see what happens as we increase the number of rounds and compare how accuracy increases with it. As we can see from the graph, adding on rounds follows the law of diminishing returns. I usually opt for three sets of rounds and we'll go with that in this situation. We've met the requirements for the main control hubs, but we will also need some interior control that will be semi-replaceable as it will probably continually be disturbed as the project progresses. If we just run a single phase one, phase two observation to a new interior control point, you can see we do not meet our spec. Let's add a tie from another main control point to clean it up. And to keep things consistent, we'll make sure it's being tied with three rounds from each control point. Now, when we go to lay something out, we generally aren't going to be doing it face one, face two. So we will need to increase our angular error of that shot. Looking back to our air propagation equations, we can see that a one second ISO instrument 
is really a 1.4 second when only one face is being used. I'm going to make use of Starnet's instrument library to be able to set specific instrument settings for this observation only. As you can see now, we're pretty far from the spec, but all is not lost. Whenever I'm doing really high accuracy layout, I'll grab one of my Leica mini prisms with a mini bipod. And if I really want to get precise, I'll grab the GPH-1P prism with one thousandth of a foot or 0.3 millimeter centering accuracy spec. Once I make those changes, I'm fairly comfortably within client specifications. We can adjust the coordinates of our layout point to increase the distance of our setup point and our layout point to see at what distance we fail the accuracy requirements and use that information along with how we set our secondary control point to come up with a set of standards on how we have to set our secondary control and the layout that comes off of it. For example, secondary control must be tied from two main control points via three rounds from each and have those observations processed before using it for layout. Any high accuracy layout must be done from control less than X feet away using a mini prism with bipod and a GPH-1P prism. One last thing to test. Let's look at what happens if we want to use GNSS ties to geo-reference our control network that as of now basically has an absolute accuracy plus or minus Google Earth imagery. Pre-analysis can handle GPS vectors as well. You just need to use an inline operator to set the accuracy specs for the instrument you are using. We'll start off using a nearby but off-site base with only two ties to create a baseline the network will swing on. Now let's try observing the four main corners and see how our accuracy increases. We're getting closer. Now let's increase the number of GNSS observations. That helped quite a bit, but we're still breaking spec. Instead of using an offsite base, let's act as if we ran static on a point in the middle of the network and we'll hold that and set our base up there. That helped a bit, but we're still not there. So what else can we do at this point? If we jump back to the beginning, you'll remember that I said relative accuracy is the priority, which for a project like this, it almost always is the case. We would want to locate an embed on one side of the building to an embed on the other side of the building much more accurately than where they are in the world. So what I like to do is lock down a baseline while holding one end and let the other float. There are some situations where I wouldn't take this approach, but there are many more where it's going to work out better. And as you can see, we're now geo-referenced and our accuracy is actually slightly improved over assuming a starting point and bearing. If you have Starnet and aren't using pre-analysis yet, I recommend you give it a try. You may not need it for every job, but there are many jobs that have been involved in where it has been extremely useful, especially when I'm not going to a site myself and have to direct the field crew. I can show them exactly why I need them to do X, Y, and Z. Besides being able to head to site with a plan of where I should be setting my control, how many observations I'll need to take, and what special equipment will be necessary, it's a great learning tool. Once you start using it more often, you'll really get a sense of what sources of error influence your coordinate quality the most. For example, when does using that half second instrument really make a meaningful difference? Do I need to order a mini prism for this job? Is taking rounds of observations instead of a single face side shot a complete waste of time? If you don't have Starnet yet, try it out for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get a free trial. I would say you don't have anything to lose by giving it a try, but if you're like me, once you try it, there's no going back. I've tried Carlson's version, Geolabs, Trimbles, and let's just say I imagine I'll be with Starnet for the rest of my career. If you are a Starnet user, hopefully you picked up a trick or two. And if you're not, get a trial. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.